Hi, friends. So this week I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. Well, different for me, at least. I've seen so many creators do sketchbook videos. Some of my favorite creators do amazing sketchbook videos. But I am terrified of sketchbooks. There's just too many possibilities. And what if I mess it up or do something truly awful, not worthy of being kept in a beautiful book that I specifically bought to hold beautiful art? So today, I'm going to conquer that fear. And this is the sketchbook that I'm going to be using. I chose this one because I have no idea where I got it, how much I paid for it, what kind of paper it is. I think it just walked into my craft room from another dimension. But really, I have no idea if I paid a dollar for it or a hundred dollars for it. So I can feel free to mess it up and not feel bad. So the first page, what to draw. There's just too many possibilities. My brain is malfunctioning. I need an idea. I know, washi tape. I'll put down washi tape. Still no ideas. Okay, you know what? I just need to get something on this first page. I need to like break the seal. If I don't, I'll procrastinate forever. So I'm just gonna paint something simple. And I'm gonna use these new paint markers from Ohuhu. Ohuhu did send these to me, but they're certainly not paying me. And the rep was kind of a butthead. So I don't feel bad saying exactly how I feel about them. I will say from first blush that I really like that they include black and white swatch cards and that they sent extra nibs. I activated all of them, except for this one which was already activated, and tested them on the swatch cards. You can see that on the left side of each swatch, I did a second coat. Some colors really need that second coat for opacity, but it doesn't seem any better or worse than any other paint markers I've tried. One thing that I noticed when activating them is that the nibs seem a little tight in the pen. Like, they're kind of hard to press in to pump the paint, if that makes sense. I have no idea if that's a good or bad thing, or if that affects the use at all. It's just something that I noticed. But let's actually get to doing something in this book. I'm going to pick out some fun colors. Basically every color, it looks like. And let's go. I decided to just do some fat, drippy shapes in various colors. I'm not really planning ahead, I just want to sort of spread the colors out and cover the page. I'm sure there are lots of people that don't feel the fear that I have over sketchbooks and just blow right through them. And I buy them like I'm going to blow through them, but then they just sit. I think it's all the possibilities. I love them, but I'm also super intimidated by them. But then I'll just buy another sketchbook thinking surely this will be the one that breaks the cycle. But today, this one actually will be the one that breaks the cycle. As I'm doing this, I'm not even sure I'm liking it so far. But I just want to keep going and get the page filled, and then I'll decide what to do with it. These markers do feel a little drier than other paint markers I've tried, and they are sort of eating the paper but that might not actually be the marker's fault since I have no idea what this paper is. It might not be meant for paint markers. After the whole page was done, it was looking a little streaky, so I went in with a second coat. And I'm actually gonna call this page done here. I really like the way it came out and I don't feel like it needs anything else. Like maybe sketch pages don't need to be something challenging or something with a lot of depth or meaning. Maybe they can just be something that makes my eyes happy to look at. And now I have the first page done, so I don't have to be afraid of it anymore. I am still a little afraid of it, but I do have a few ideas now. I could redo something that I messed up. I could do a bunch of small things. I could do something really simple, but spend a lot of time on the details. I could redo old characters or make new characters. 
I think I'm gonna do two of those things. I'm gonna do a few small items, but also redo something I wasn't happy with the first time. I'm gonna tape off this page again, and I did intend for each square to be a different size, but I also intended for them to be actual squares, and they are not. They're pretty wonky, but I can't slow progress now. I'm gonna start with some loose sketches, and this page is gonna be bugs. I wanted to redo this beetle I painted before that I wasn't happy with, and I've had this reference of a cicada in my phone for a while. Plus, I always love painting butterflies. Since I'm gonna be working off references for each of these, I'll put the reference on the screen. I'm not gonna try to copy the references directly, but use them as a sort of roadmap if I get lost and need help. I'm also gonna start each drawing with alcohol markers. I need more colors than the paint pens provide, and I know that I love Ohuhu alcohol markers. I have absolutely no complaints about them. I really liked the bright colors on this cicada, so that's the kind of feeling that I'm going for. I'm blending a little bit, but I am gonna go in with the fine tip side of the paint markers to add some details. I do really like the way that the paint shows up over the markers. It's hard to get these light of colors with markers alone, so these little details really stand out. Especially the metallic ones. I'm still not sure you need nine metallic markers right out of the gate when the pack is only 30 markers total, but I do like how they look on this guy. Obviously, I'm not following the reference super closely, I'm just sort of adding things where I feel right. But I'm glad that he's there for moral support. One thing that I forget about paint markers is that they take a hot second to dry, so the outside of my palm is covered in paint smudges. For the background of this, I'm going to try this acrylic ink that I got in an art subscription box. I don't know what most people use this for, but it says that you can apply it with a brush and that you can dilute it with water, so I'm going to use it like a watercolor wash for the background. Next, I'm going to work on a butterfly and I'm trying to go a little blendier with the markers, but I spent so much time going back and forth blending the colors. Why do I feel like I did this before with the butterflies? I also kind of expected these colors to be a little lighter and brighter, but this guy's looking a little dark and emo. So I tried adding some metallic paint to it to brighten it up. These markers don't blend, obviously, because they're not meant to, so I tried using my finger to blend the colors while they were wet. It worked, but it also sort of dulled the shine of the paint. I didn't have the right metallic shade for the top of the wing, so I used a regular color, and that just really made it worse. So now I've covered all of the marker, and it still doesn't look good. This butterfly is definitely going through its ugly phase. Let's just keep going. I added some colored stripes, some polka dots, and some veins. And it's starting to get better. But my favorite part of butterflies is always the black markings. One thing about these fine tips is that they're the plastic tips that tend to skip on any texture and splatter paint everywhere. And boy was this black tip splattering. I did figure out later that the tip had a bent piece of plastic on it, so that might be why it was extra splattery. I can change the tip out since they include extra tips, but I didn't realize this during filming. The black markings did really help this butterfly, but he's still just okay. I touched up the splatters and added a yellow background with the same watered down acrylic ink. Now for my beetle buddy down here. This is the same reference that I used before, so let's see if I can do better this time. For his base coloring, I started with six different green markers to create the highlighted areas and sort of build up the shading off of that. I don't know if that's how professional marker people do it, but it's how I do it. And I'm just sort of adding lines and color here and there, wherever it feels right. I'm definitely not going for realism here. 
and I like him so far. I mean, he kind of looks like three green pumpkins sitting on top of each other, but in a good way. So now I'm gonna add some color with the paint markers, starting with the gold metallic. I really like that on the cicada, and the reference I'm using is sort of a metallic-y beetle, so this guy needs some shine. I also used a green metallic marker to add some shine to the rest of him since he is a green beetle. Because there's a tiny bit of purple in the reference photo, I used some purple metallic for his eyes and on his head. And then I added some bronze to bring in some of the brown on his body. And I liked how the purple and bronze look so much that I added even more purple to this middle pumpkin-y area. And then, what the heck, I might as well add it around the wings too. I've completely abandoned the reference now, but ooh, I like how he's looking. I alternated adding lines and dots to add color in small bits, building up where I wanted to. I wanted him just slightly darker in some areas, so I added black paint marker. But I realized that it would have looked better under the metallic marker, so I went back over it in some places to tone it down. I added his legs, which I weirdly love for their little bumpiness, and then a yellow background. And I'm so happy with how he came out this time. Last, let's do this other butterfly. This time, I picked out very light markers in all the same undertone to make sure that they blend nicely and don't fight me as much. The colors are very rosy and I really like how they're looking, so I don't want to cover them up too much. I just want to add some veins and markings in equally light color. I added a few more spots in white and I really love how this gal is coming out. She's so soft and pretty, like an ethereal ballerina butterfly. While I finish her up, let me say that I do like the fine tip side of the marker more than the fat tip. I like that each marker is double sided and I wish more markers would do that. I do think the color variety could be a lot better. It definitely could use some more darker colors and more pastel colors. I realized that Ohuhu just broke into paint markers, so that's just sort of a thought for the future. As for this page, I really like it actually. I love all of them except this guy. None of them really match style-wise, but I don't care. I love the cicada, he's very funky, and I'm really really happy with the beetle. This butterfly is gorgeous. This butterfly is butt, and he doesn't belong. But ultimately, I'm really happy with this page because not only did I do four different things, but I redeemed my beetle from before. So with my confidence up a little bit, I'm gonna try to draw something that I've been wanting to draw for a long time. This is a sea slug called a leaf sheep, and he is the cutest animal I have ever seen. I've had this picture saved on my phone for a year now, and I'm just finally feeling brave enough to try it. There is another sea slug that I've been wanting to draw, so I sketched it up here, but I get distracted for a while before we get to him. So with this drawing, I wanted to go for more realism than I have up to this point. So I'm going in with alcohol markers, and then I'm gonna go over it with colored pencils. I did use a lot of different colors in the markers just to save myself time later with the pencils. But if this is saving time, I shudder to think how much time I would have spent otherwise because this still took me hours on just this one drawing. It's actually looking pretty cute with just the markers, so I'm starting to question my plan to go for realism. Like, I kind of like him all cartoony looking. Also, since I don't have exactly the right purple for his leaf tips, I had to go with a fuchsia-y color, and he's kind of reminding me of a reverse dragon fruit. He's so cute, but I'm gonna be brave and stick to my plan with the colored pencils. I'm trying to add some shading and blending, altering the colors that I didn't have the right marker for, and adding all the little details to try and match the reference and I have no idea if it's working at all. He 
still looks really cartoony, but he's also a pretty cartoony looking animal anyway, so maybe that's just going to be how he looks. Either way, I really like how he came out. But I'm not done with him yet, because I need to try him in a more deliberately cartoony style. So this one is going to be done only with markers. I left space between each leaf as I was drawing them so that I could still tell where the leaves were when I went to outline it later. As I was doing this, it started to look like watercolor to me. So now I'm thinking I want to try to paint him with watercolor. But I gotta focus, because this guy isn't done yet. I did outline him with some big fat lines, and I feel like I'm definitely going to revisit this guy, because I feel like neither drawing really came out how I was envisioning them in my head. Neither are bad, and I know people won't understand what I mean when I say that they could be better. I had a vision for how I wanted them to come out, and... I can't even articulate what exactly isn't right about them, but they just don't match what I had in my mind. I guess that's bound to happen when you have to rely on your hands to create what's in your head. All of that to say I do really like both of these, and the leaf sheep is in my top five favorite animals now. So I'm going to do one more drawing because I already have it sketched out. This is another sea slug, but it doesn't have a cute name. It does kind of remind me of a unicorn though. This guy is a little more see-through and less color blocky, so I'm feeling very unsure about what I'm doing here. I'm just gonna take it in sections and block it out and then go over it in pencils to blend it more. As I was going, I did try to blend the colors a little bit and they were so light and pretty together, especially once I started the tenderly things, that this too started to look like watercolor to me. What is going on with my eyes that everything looks like watercolor? And now of course I want to paint this guy in watercolor. But that's for another day. He's really not looking how I was anticipating, but he's actually looking really really pretty. Of course, now I don't know whether to add colored pencils or not. It's times like this that I really wish I knew digital art programs better. It would be so nice to be able to experiment and just be able to undo something if it ended up ruining what already looked good. I am going to go in with colored pencils and hope that it won't come out disappointing. I'm nearing a point where I'm starting to feel a little sketchbook fatigued. Like, you know when you're working on a craft project and you're coming to the end, even when you've had a blast working on it, you're just ready for it to be complete and to move on to something else. That's how I feel. I'm definitely glad that I did these pages, and I will for sure work in this book again, but I'm ready to just sit back and enjoy the end result for a while. I really like how the tendrils came out with the colored pencils, but again, I really wasn't sure how to do his body. I just worked in sections and tried to blend as best that I could. But I definitely need to work on my realism a little bit more. I do like this weird little guy, but I might have liked him better before. Oh well. So overall, I'm really glad that I did this. I had a lot of fun for a few days, and I love how many other ideas it gave me. I went from my mind being completely blank because it was too open-ended to now I have tons of ideas just branching off from each other. I will definitely be doing this again. And I feel much less scared now to actually put something down in the book. So what do you think? Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.